The August drop pod is live right now. Now you're probably thinking, Kevin, you've already made videos talking about this. There's nothing new to learn about this drop pod. I know everything is happening wrong. There's a ton of hidden patches along with this update that I'm gonna cover in this video that are serious gameplay altering patches that you guys need to know before jumping in playing Halo. So of course, if you wanna know everything, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So the patch notes obviously go over across core visors, which is fantastic and which is great to see, but also the improved Mark 7 helmet attachment capabilities are now available and they actually list out in the patch notes specifically which ones are going to be cross core available or cross helmet available, I should say, for the Mark 7. If you guys want to get into that, link in the description down below. Uh, again, we also have the challenges now being shown within the menus, which is fantastic. But here's where the good stuff is. This is stuff that wasn't mentioned at all previously until these patch notes just went live. So I'm gonna go over all the good ones with you guys here. For one specifically saying the volume of nearby players shield recharge has been lowered, especially when recharging players is out of line of sight. This is an audio cue that I use specifically when it comes to understanding the awareness of what's going on. So if you're out of line of sight, you should be able to have your shields recharged. It's actually probably be much more effective for camo players when your shields are recharging, right? Cause you're probably fighting for the camo and you wanna push up into the enemy's side of things. This is going to be a great addition for the game right here. Also, uh, something that I've heard that would be a little bit saddening for a lot of people, especially in the campaign side of things, and choppers will no longer continue boosting after being disabled by a dynamo EMP effect. If you guys don't know, currently right now there's a bit of a glitch where like if you're boosting with the chopper and you hit them with a dynamo nade and while they're going off, they'll just keep going off into infinity, which is kind of a fun thing for campaign, but obviously you can't really have that happening with multiplayer, so I kind of understand why that being fixed out right there. This is a huge, huge change right here though. The M41 Spanker damage radius has been improved and now more consistently damages enemies, which is amazing. I've had this happen so many times when you shoot a rocket, you're like, how did that not kill that guy? Well, the blast radius now has been increased, and so this should be a little bit more consistent, which is fantastic. I've had way too many spanker rocket shots just go like somewhere where I would thought I would have killed the player, but then it didn't. Most likely I'm gonna kill myself. Sometimes I've even killed myself and not killed the enemy player with the rocket, which is so confusing, but glad to see this change is coming to place right here. Now one with the plasma pistol, a big change saying I fully charged shot from a plasma pistol will now correctly deplete all shields including active overshields which is fantastic that's what it should do with a charged plasma shot i'm surprised they haven't touched the tracking when it comes to the plasma shot because let's all agree that like the tracking on the plasma pistol for charge shot is pretty terrible i've covered this in previous videos as well and it's something I would really like to see changed moving forward. I'm pretty sure 343 even mentioned that they want to improve it, but and it's it's whatever right now. It's step in the right direction. You know what I mean? Kind of stuff. Also, Mark Assist and medals related to the Mark system will now appear correctly when the Superintendent AI is equipped. It's one of the most popular AIs out there. Glad to see that's being changed. That same players can no longer mark enemies who are obscured behind waist high cover. This is really important as well as it was pointed out on Twitter previously that you could spot players through walls essentially and I've been doing this all the time because I use my marking ability all the time especially in playing rank so this is going to be a huge change for uh, the players being marked that if you're behind cover you're not getting marked because well you shouldn't be this is huge for social slayer as well as also for rank but mainly for social slayer right here saying headshots more consistently register on enemies without shields when using precision weapons such as the m50 sidekick or the stalker rifle now i don't know if they're using these weapons as examples of what has been changed with precision weapons because obviously there are multiple precision weapons unless you're consent unless you don't consider the battle rifle a precision weapon which i personally do but this is a great improvement as well because how many times have you guys shot a headshot with the stalker rifle or the sidekick you're like that should have hit and you get kind of questioned why that is so that's a great change right there as well. In custom games, King of the Hill now goes over time when both teams had the same score as time runs out. That's a huge improvement right there. In free-for-all King of the Hill matches, the mini scoreboard near the bottom of the screen no longer shows unused meters and the full scoreboard shows the following statistics, points, score, kills, and deaths. 
The stuff that you actually need to know for sure right there. In custom games, attrition rounds now consistently end when a team is fully eliminated. This is certainly much more important when it comes to people who are doing like more competitive kind of stuff. We tried doing attrition when it comes to uh, the BenQ monitor uh, tournament that we held on, on the channel a few weeks ago here. And that was an issue with attrition that just wouldn't end for whatever reason. So they started to do King of the Hill instead. We had to kind of play on the fly because, well, there was an error in custom games. As uh, so also, this is going to be huge once Forge goes and gets involved as well. And also, while spectating a player in observer mode on PC, player weapons will no longer shake when the camera moves up and down. This is a great thing when it comes, especially for the competitive side of games, when it comes to the broadcast side of things. Absolutely needed when it comes to that change right there. Resolved an issue where dropped equipment could no longer be picked up near the lower light bridge on Catalyst. Obviously very important to have that. I've had actually had that happen to me previously. Ex excellent to see that's been changed. Observers will no longer be counted as a member of an enemy team in attrition custom games. I'm pretty sure that kind of ties into the previous one we just mentioned here as well. The outline of the Danger Zone's final circle will no longer appear early in Last Spartan Standing in custom games. Again, another big improvement right there. Drop weapons will no longer accumulate during Tactical Slayer matches. My assumption is it'll probably work the same way as it does in Last Spartan Standing, right? Where if you drop a weapon, it just kind of disappears. Appears. And with Tactical Slayer, I mean, you spawn in with all the weapons. Everyone has the same weapons. No reason for weapons to accumulate on the ground. So good change of quality of life improvement right there for sure. Now, do you guys remember that issue with the challenge system when it comes to the premium battle pass, right? If you went to the previous season, you'd actually lose your challenge slot. So right here, it's saying the fourth challenge slot will now always be enabled when a premium battle pass is equipped. That was an issue with the season one battle pass that if you bought into the battle pass, post season two launch that you wouldn't get your fourth challenge slot for whatever reason it took what almost two months to get to that point but hey we got it you know the advisor colors will now appear correctly when using the following helmet and attachment combinations right there great to see that's been changed up land grab and last barn standing now have unique game mode icons in various venues fantastic to see that in the uh, ranked arena playlist changing the ranked queue type now correctly updates the estimated weight tool tip which is happens in the lower left right you know i've had this happen plenty of times where i queue up for ranked and i'm like this wait time is way longer or way shorter than it's predicted so again a nice ui change right there so an error messages now consistently appear in matchmaking playlist obviously that's fantastic now we have balance changes as well one coming to the actual grapple shot the one of the most popular pieces of equipment within the game saying to maintain multiplayer balance players will no longer be able to exit a vehicle to cancel an enemy's grapple jack now if you're not quite sure what that actually means check out this clip here that was posted up on reddit showcasing this player here who grapples onto wasp the wasp's driver actually jumps out of the wasp and jumps back into it to cancel out the grapple jack situation right here and then the player dies because of it now now, personally, I kind of like to view this as more of a skill gap rather than an actual bug with the game because I actually really like that feature because I do feel that the grapple jack is a little too effective on vehicles. It'd be a really cool thing to kind of add that into the game where if you're driving like a warhog or in this case a wasp or any other kind of vehicle where if you're being grapple jacked, there is some kind of counter you can put into it. I believe that if you have the banshee, right, if you do a backflip or something like that, you can cancel out that grapple jack, something like that, where it has to be something activated by the player to counteract the grapple jack because the grapple jacking is pretty easy like let's not lie like it kind of gets in the way of playing b2b and vehicle play for sure though uh it does feel kind of cheap on the end of the grab of the person who's doing the grapple jacking right where you kind of expected the game to function this way and then it doesn't well it just kind of comes down to game sense and knowledge and personally i'm kind of in the air when it comes to this change but 343 does clarify why they made this change Vehicle conversions trading from one team to another is critical to balance in big team battle and arena. If we can encourage vehicles swapping teams at least once per match, we can safely make vehicles strong. So basically saying that if you're able to steal a vehicle in a relatively easy manner, they can make them stronger because you can just do a quick little swap right there, right? If you can't steal the vehicle, you kind of have to make them a little bit weak because if you can't really take them out with just swapping out the player who's driving, in it then it kind of ruins the balance of that especially since like really the only way to counter vehicles in this game or with the rocket launcher which in btb most of the time drop rather randomly 
Sniper Rifle kind of works in the skewer as well. The grapple shot plays an important role in the sandbox to cause vehicle conversions. There was an unintended mechanic where exiting a vehicle would stop a grapple jack. We fixed that unintended mechanic so that the grapple jack can better play its role and vehicle conversions is more frequent. Now I have to ask you guys, is the grapple jack canceling of exiting vehicles skill gap or a bug? Let me know in the comments down below. Light and medium vehicles also got a buff saying that non-tank vehicles such as the Ghost or Warhog are now more resistant to small arms fire. All of these changes apply to multiplayer as well as a few to campaign as well. But for the campaign and multiplayer, the most of the changes were rather small and incremental, where the big changes really come from the Disruptor Super Combine and the Dynamo Grenades on these vehicles. The damage quality has been basically cut in half for most of the Dynamo effects. When it comes to the multiplayer side of things, bullet damage only got like a 5% decrease, nothing too crazy right there. Though explosion damage on light and medium vehicles had huge reduction especially on light vehicles going from 80 percent damage to 50 percent damage that's a big change right there it also reduced the damage of hard light on light vehicles from 100 percent to 75 percent same thing with hard light on medium vehicles from 100 percent to 70 percent so significant buffs on the explosion and hard light damage the Warhog also had a change to its physics where it says the Warhog can now be knocked around more easily by players using weapons such as the M41 Spark Spanker rocket launcher and the Repulsor equipment. They didn't mention anything about the skewer because I want to do that stuff we saw in the trailers right with the skewer flying the Warhog off the map but you know we have a few changes right there. They're much more like incremental tiny changes uh, just enough to kind of make it a little bit better but not a whole lot to where I think it would be massively gameplay changing. Now of course this patch wouldn't be going through with a few Known issues that they probably weren't able to address right now at the moment. We're in last Spartan standing, custom games bots do not level up after gaining enough score to improve their loadouts. That's a known issue right now, but this one is definitely important for a lot of you US users or people who have data caps on their internet, saying that the Xbox app or Microsoft Store app version of Halo Infinite may download extra data upon launching the game. For example here, one player stated that after one match of Halo Infinite used 350 megabytes, megabytes of data for one match. Now Halo support did say that they were going to address this data issue with this August drop pod, but may have not been able to get to it in time as it's relatively new issue that just was brought up. Now, as a Steam user, I haven't really had that much of an issue when it comes to my data caps being hit, really. That really only ever happens with Flight Simulator whenever I'm playing with photogrammetry on. As this is an ongoing issue, as soon as we get some actual information about what's going on with the data caps and the data issues when it comes to Halo Infinite, I'll let you guys know here on the channel. Now, it is Tuesday, so that means we have a new shop update, guys. So I think I'd go over this one because this one is actually a really important shop right here. This is the shop that has the gold coating that we've been eyeing down for quite some time here. This is the champion bundle. And of course, as soon as I click on it, it says core required equipment doesn't happen. So apparently I don't have the right core for this whole thing, but there we go. Now it's back. I just have to click it back in and do it a few times, but look at this coating, my guys. Oh my gosh. This is for 1200 credits, right? You get the coating and this coating also works for all the other cores within Halo Infinite as well. So this is gonna be fantastic. This goes across all of the other types of customization, no matter what kind of core you like to utilize, guys, this coating, this gold coating will be available for you to take advantage of, which I am very happy for. Plus you get a cool stance with the Audible, which looks fantastic. We also have some armor pieces as well. We have a shoulder pad here going for the Mark VII, which does look actually kind of nice here. And then you get some filler stuff with some grenade emblems and stuff like that. But this is a coating pack that I might actually have to purchase because I've been waiting for this for such a long time. Now it's finally here within the store. I'm definitely gonna be jumping on this as well. Uh, the tactical recursion one looks kind of scuffed right here, but uh, basically it's just a visor. If you want to check it out, there you go. It's a visor. It's cross core, so that's cool as well. I have the UA Farah right here, which is a different shoulder pad, which I mean, it like looks all right. I'm not too crazy about it. Uh, I mean, it just kind of looks like a little nub shoulder pad, not to do crazy. I think I would kind of pass on that one. We also have the Wheat Cedar right here for this, this coating, which I feel like we've seen this one before. It does look nice on the Warhog, don't get me wrong, but for 200 credits, I mean, it's like not that much really. So if you're kind of really into this colorization of your vehicles, um, check it out. That's You get some Mongoose, you get a couple Warhogs, you get the Razorback, and that's about it right there. 
and that's kind of about the store and so we can also got to check out the weekly ultimate right guys we gotta make sure what, what we're grinding for this week well what we're grinding for this week is going to be the knife dancer which is another kind of visor it has like a purpley kind of effect to it but you can kind of see here in its full effect it kind of has like a purple distorted kind of broken up image kind of look to the whole thing and actually looks kind of nice definitely something worth grinding for you think it would kind of help solidify the visual that you're going for for your spartan now if you want to know more about the cross core customization or forge co-op news that's coming our way guys or a server fix for the packet loss issue that's currently going on with the Halo infinite check out this video right here on the screen thank you so much guys so much for watching greatly appreciate it i'll catch you on the next one peace out